I'm Michael Weinberg. I am the executive director of the Engelberg Center on Innovation, Law, and Policy at NYU Law. The main benefits of Open Glam is fundamentally that it brings culture into the world and it gives a much broader part of the population an opportunity to engage with and learn from and build upon that culture. It brings it out of institutions and out to the population and to people. And that's not to say that institutions are doing a bad job being shepherds of culture or that there's a problem with them being a home to these artifacts. But there's only so much that one institution can do or even a collection of glam institutions can do. And when you push this information and this shared culture out into the world, it creates many more opportunities for people to engage with it in unexpected ways. And this culture was created it is, this, these cultural objects were created among a diverse community of people. And so there's no reason to prevent the same broad, diverse community of people from using that existing culture to build new things. I don't know that there are practical, technical barriers to open clam. There are many examples of institutions who have rolled out successful open GLAM projects. And from a workflow and process standpoint, there are challenges, but I think they're all solvable challenges. The real barrier to open GLAM is a little bit more of an institutional mindset barrier. And I think that barrier is that institutions end up conflating their stewardship obligations towards the objects in their collection with a right of control over how we use shared culture. And so institutions that, that, that are the home for these cultural objects, I think it's good that they think of themselves as stewards of those objects and as, as kind of maintainers and of, of those objects and have a, a, a cultural responsibility that we have given them to make sure that those objects uh, are available for future generations and are available today. But that does not mean that they have an ownership interest and have the ability to decide who gets to use those cultural objects and how and in what contexts. And as institutions rethink their relationship to those objects, it makes open access and open glam much easier. One of the things that's been most surprising about working in the open glam community is how many people came to it not from an open access mindset. Uh, it's not like they were they were already thinking, you know, open access is really important, and so I want to get involved in open glam. Over and over again, I talked to people, and the way they found their way into the open glam world is they were just trying to do something that was interesting or important to them, and they ran into all these barriers and all this friction. And they realized that the barriers and friction were, could be resolved with more open access and more open glam. And so then they became very invested in open glam. That's a very different way to enter the space than to say, okay, I have an ideological commitment to openness and I'm going to bring it to the glam community. It, in some ways, it's exactly the opposite. It's saying, oh, no, no, I just want to do this thing that I think is interesting and important. And there are barriers. And I realized that by removing the barriers for, for my thing, I actually can remove the barriers for many more things. And so that's an important thing that it has shaped the community because the community ends up being very, very functionally oriented and they care about open access. I mean, there, there are plenty of people, myself included, who care about open glam and open access because they think it's you know, the right thing to do. And they think that it's the right thing for culture. But it's not just a theoretical exercise. It's a very practical exercise in trying to reduce barriers to create new culture and to do new kinds of engagement. And I think that as a North Star for the community is really valuable. In terms of a personal message for those who are hesitating to open up your collections, I'll simply say, you can do it. Uh, give people a chance to be fantastic. If you are dwelling on some random edge cases of like, what if this could go wrong and what if that could go wrong, 
But don't focus on those bad actors. Focus on the good actors and think of all the interesting, useful, productive, exciting things that will happen and build your open access program around that. Build it for good actors. Make it easy for good people to do good things. And don't worry so much on being able to prevent every single possible weird application that makes you uncomfortable. Uh, just embrace the breadth of humanity, embrace the weirdness, and, and make it easy for the people who are going to be doing fantastic things to do that fantastic work.